Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Table Talk, a conversation on race. And it's great to be with everyone on this beautiful Wednesday afternoon. Today is March 22nd, 2023, and we are excited to have you on our call. If you're listening to this on our podcast or watching this on the video, we're so thankful that you're here as you continue to educate yourself on how we can develop the beloved community. My name is Erwin Lopez, and I am the co-chair of the beloved community, which works alongside the Bishop's Anti-Racist Task Force. And the goal of our podcast and our webinars is to bring awareness to the work of the beloved community in the Florida Conference, to equip you as you integrate the beloved community into your ministry and into your lives. And we believe that this work is an act of discipleship. This is how we love God and how we love neighbor. So for today, our topic is educating youth groups about different religions. And we have a, a number of special guests today. We have youth pastor Emily Fegenhauer and her two students, William and Aubrey. And the reason why I wanted to record this podcast was because I heard that Emily was leading her youth group through learning about different religions. And I was inspired by her work. And I asked her if I could interview her to kind of get her mindset and her purpose behind that. And if I can also interview some of her students to see what they gained from that experience. So I'm very excited to have this conversation. Um, just a little bit on Emily. Emily graduated with a communications degree from Olivet Nazarene University in Kankakee, Illinois. She's a graduate of the Youth Ministry Institute in Orlando, Florida. And she was born and raised in Chicago. Um, she's been in full-time ministry since 2007 and is currently the director of youth ministries at First Lakeland United Methodist Church. She's a proud aunt of two nephews, Jacob and Ryan, and she has a chocolate lab named Bear. Hi, Emily. It's good to see you. And thank you so much for coming and for leading us in this conversation. Thanks. I'm so excited to be here. Yeah, yeah. So the floor is yours. Tell us about this vision that you had and how it was implemented and just tell us a story. Yeah. So um, when I was at my previous church um, at Hyde Park, we did this um, world religion series twice. And so I knew that I wanted to implement it here at First Lakeland when I came on um, as youth minister in 2021. So um, I just think it's really important for us in the United Methodist Church and us as Christians in general to have an open heart and open mind when it comes to other religions, how much we're alike as opposed to different, and um, to have a better understanding of what other religions are like and believe so that we aren't fearful of it. Um, um, so back in, I think it was 2011 was the first time that I did it um, when I was at Hyde Park. And um, at that point I had a curriculum and so we just taught on it. And I think I had some guest speakers that may have come in. Um, I remember having a rabbi come in and talk about um, that to our students. And we had some Muslim women come in and talk to our students. But the second time around, um, several years later, we did a, um, a field trip type of thing. And that's exactly what I did with our students here at First Lakeland back in January of um, 2023, so a couple months ago. And we did this world religion series where we went to a local Jewish synagogue and um, we heard from one of the rabbis, um, the senior rabbi at a local synagogue, and he showed um, a lot of the things inside of the um, temple that was really important in the synagogue of the Jewish traditions. And so um, I will wait to have you hear a little bit more from our students about some of the things that they learned. And then we went to, and I've never done this before. This was actually amazing here in Lakeland. We went to a Muslim mosque and that was pretty impactful. Um, I had called several mosques when I was over in Tampa at my previous church and I never got a call back. And this mosque here in Lakeland was phenomenal. They were just so hospitable. They were so welcoming. Um, they had this huge welcoming hospitality spread, which again, I'll wait for our students to tell you more about that, but that was pretty impactful too. And um, we have some local um, Hindu temples that are here. And I went to physically go to this temple to try to see if they would allow us to come but um, they weren't able to accommodate our time frame that we were able to bring our students and parents. But we had about, um, at each location, we had 60 
of our students and parents come um, each week when we did this. And um, so the night that we talked about Hinduism, we actually had one of the uh, professors from Florida Southern. He is an elder in the church here in Lakeland um, for the United Methodist Conference. He came and spoke about Hinduism to our kids. Um, so that was the only night that we had someone come to our church to talk about a world religion, but we were able to physically go to a synagogue and to a Muslim mosque. And so it's pretty impactful. And then we rounded out the end of the series with Andy Whitaker Swift, one of our pastors here at First Lakeland. And he talked about, well, what do we do with this? What do we do with knowing more about world religions? And specifically, what do we do with the scripture that Jesus says, um, you know, only those who know me and can come to the father. And what do we do if for our brothers and sisters in other religions who may not believe that Jesus is the only way? Um, and so how do we wrestle with that as Christians? How do we wrestle with that as United Methodists? And so it was a really impactful series, I think, for our students um, to grow, not only knowing about other religions, but also to have a deeper dive into their own faith and into what they believe. And so um, I guess I would introduce first um, Will Coral. Um, he is a junior um, in our youth ministry, and he is one of our students on our leadership team. His dad works here at the church with me. And um, Will was um, there, I think, for all three of our, our World Religion Series nights, um, and then also for our, our last night coming all together. So um, so if we want to ask Will a couple of questions, and then maybe we can go to our other student, Aubrey, who experienced that as well. Sure, we can start with Will or start with Aubrey. I'd like just to hear about your experience from your perspective. You can, what was it like to visit the mosque? What, what was it like when Emily even brought the idea up? Walk with me through how you experienced this sermon series or this season of your life. Yeah, so I I feel like it was a great idea. I really enjoyed it. Uh, I was absent for the Jewish synagogue, um, but from what I heard, um, it was a really great experience, and they were really hospitable, and they showed a lot of their um, religion. I remember hearing about some of the books they have there. And uh, from what I've heard, it was great. And I think my favorite was going to the um, the mosque. The, um, that was the trip in the series that I was able to go on. And it was great to see how uh, they do things in their religion. And it was great to see how similar it was to our religion. I remember them talking about how they have Jesus in the religion, they have a God in their religion, and there were some small differences, but overall, it was a similar story, and it was great to see, honestly, what I got out of it from the series is that we're all human, uh, depending on the religion, it doesn't really matter what, what religion we practice, it's, we're all this we're all the same flesh and bones and we should be kind to each other no matter what we practice or believe in. Awesome. Awesome. That's great. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, Aubrey, what about you? Share with me your journey through this process. Um, I also was not present for the Jewish synagogue. Um, very upset I couldn't make it. But when Emily first introduced the idea of this world religion series, I, I personally was very excited. I studied world religions previously in my junior year of high school. And so all the religions that we were going to be studying here at church, I already had previous knowledge on. So I was excited to actually like step foot into it and hear it more from like, you know, just a teacher teaching it at the front of the classroom. Um, I went to the mosque though, and that experience was very impactful. Like again, in the classroom, I was taught, you know, women would sit on behind the men and I was taught about some of the basic beliefs and how they did believe in Jesus, but he wasn't the last one. 
um, they had Muhammad and the Quran and like how we don't have the Quran, but it was so impactful just to be there and to see it for myself. Um, they, there are many differences, but there's also a lot of similarities like how Will said, and the differences aren't things that are like, oh my gosh, like, whoa, that's like out of this world, like crazy. It was like, they made sense. And honestly, a lot of the different religions, especially in the Jewish religion, I didn't go to the synagogue, so I didn't hear it from him himself, but the faith that they have, they really focus on helping other people and like what they do in their lifetime and just to be a better person. And I kind of took that and I was like, you know, we as Christians should do that too. And even though it's a different religion, both Islam and Judaism are Abrahamic religions. So then that's like another similarity we have is we all started off the same. We just eventually at some point in our lives, there was like a little breakaway. <clears throat> that's great I um thank you so much for sharing and you know the three of you have something in common that brought up a question for the three of you because William you mentioned that when Emily brought up the topic you were you thought it was great and Aubrey when she brought up the topic you said I was excited and I want to know why you you thought it was great why were you excited about it? And the question for me, for Emily, that relates to this is, what sparked this in you? Because you, you thought this was a great idea too, <laughs> right? But why? What, what is it? Was something your parents taught you? Something you learned in school? Like, I feel like something had to happen where you were open-minded to this idea. And can you, can we, can you share some of that story? Whoever feels that to go first, but if you want like an order, we can do Emily, this time Aubrey, and then Will. Sure. So I remember the impact in 9-11 um, when that happened. Um, I was in youth group at the time. I was a, um, I think I was a sophomore. I think I was a sophomore in high school. And I remember the impact that everyone was afraid of um, of Muslims at that time, and that that was a really scary point of, you know, then we were hearing about, um, you know, <laughs> even before I came to First Lakeland, the latest one was about um, COVID and um, people being afraid of the Chinese culture, and that, you know, people were doing some really hard things to Chinese restaurants, and just the, the impact that we can get so fearful and so scared of a whole group of people when something may have happened that was scary, that was only a, a few people. And like, it can just blanket a whole um, society. And that fear base is not of God. That's not who we are. That's not who we were created to be, is to have this blanket of, um, any kind of injustice about a whole society when some people can make some poor choices, whether it's, you know, 9-11, whether it's, you know, and make some big impacts of that. Like the, you know, the COVID was a huge impact and 9-11 and was a big impact, but still we, I just don't want our kids growing up thinking that they need to be fearful of another religion, fearful of another um, race, fearful of another um lifestyle group like if we get to know them if we get to know people and understand where they're coming from we have so much more in common than than any kind of you know disagreement or any kind of thing that we don't agree on and so I think it's really important that we lean into um the hard lean into the uncomfortable and um I think you can come out with a lot of joy and a lot of um uh, just kindness and love. And so th I think that's where this came out of, of wanting to just understand better about that and also answer questions because 
I think a lot of kids now, um, you know, there's so many things that fight for their attention and their belief system, whether it's horoscopes, whether it's tarot cards, whether it's uh, gemstones and crystals and whether, you know, like there's a lot of things that are pulling for on their belief system. And so what is, what is the main line? Where is God in all of this? Where is God? Um, you know, everyone's seeking peace, everyone's seeking love. And so, um, I think it's important that we lean into those kinds of, um, uh, things that can take us away from the main thing. So that's kind of where this idea came out of, of, of leaning into other religions and understanding that better. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing that. And how about you, Aubrey? Why were you excited about this? Because even when you say that to me, I feel like something happened to you in your life that opened up your mind to get excited about this. Do you think you can kind of lead us to that root or that experience, that moment? Yeah. So I would say about for most of my life, I've always been, especially with the ways, the way I've been raised by my parents, I've always been exposed to various different cultures or religions and things. Like when I was, gosh, I don't know, maybe like eight or nine, we had friends who were Jewish and they took us to a synagogue once because they were watching us and they were like, you know what, let's just go because we were with them. And so they took us and like, it was a fun experience to experience a different religion. Um, I've always been interested in like other religions and cultures too. I love learning the differences we have and like embracing them. And I, I don't know really where it stemmed from. I've just always been interested in it. Um, like at my school, we get to write papers for each class. We get to choose what they're about. And I've like, there's one overall paper we have to do to get our IB diploma. And I did mine on world religions because I don't know why, but I've just always been so fascinated in learning about different religions and cultures. Even though I have my own, I still like to learn about the other ones. Awesome. How about you, Will? You said... I thought it was great. That's a direct quote from you. Why do you, why do you so excited about it too? Um, I was excited about it uh, because, uh, unlike Aubrey, I never really studied other religions that much, um, and I was excited to learn more about the way they do they do things and um, wanted to see how it was different, how it was similar. And um, like Aubrey, my parents raised me around lots of different people and um I, I thought it was a great idea for the whole youth group because well I was raised with my parents to be very open-minded some people might not have been and I feel like it's a great learning experience to learn how other people do things so awesome y'all y'all were raised by good parents I got two little ones an eight, eight-year-old and three-year-old so Y'all are teaching me. I need to expose them early, you know? Another question I have for the three of you is pushback. And I guess my question first was, did you receive any pushback? But now I feel like my question is, using the baseline of, I'm sure you received some pushback, <laughs> at least in the very beginning. Or I'm sure if you're in school and you're encouraging this kind of openness that you may run into, an obstacle or two. So can you share any pushback, any any conversations you've had and, and how you handled them? I know for Emily, it may be different. You had a parent who didn't want to participate or something like that, but share with us some pushbacks and how you handled them. I actually received zero pushback. Um, if anything, I actually heard from a lot of children's ministry parents who said, not only do I really want to make sure that you're the youth director when my kids get there, but can you make sure that you do this so that I can go and participate? So no, I didn't hear any pushback. I didn't get any pushback from our pastors, um, from really anyone. If anything, um, I heard more of, can we make this like a church-wide thing so that people in the bigger church can experience this type of thing? And we did. We had some people who signed up for our um, Muslim and our Jewish um, synagogue trips um, who were just 
churchwide members who don't even have kids in the youth program, but they were like, please, can I come? I would love to experience this. Um, especially the, the Muslim mosque, because that is something that is very, um, has seemed very difficult to get into that kind of culture and into one of their services. And so uh, we had some extra people, especially on that trip too. So, so for me, I did not have any pushback at all. Oh, that was great. Not even the first time you did this in your previous appointment, your previous church? So my first church, um, I don't remember pushback at all the second time when we did the field trips. Um, and when I was there, uh, we were able to go to a Hindu temple. Um, there's a big one in Tampa. And that was really, really cool. The Hindu temple. That was like amazing. Um, it was at nighttime. It was all lit up. I mean, it was really cool. Um, but the first time that we did the world religions, I think that there was more hesitation, honestly, around, um, the first question I had, we had somebody come in who was a Buddhist, a Christian, uh, Christian Buddhist, a Buddhist Christian, Buddhist Christian, whatever, you know, you know, because I think the question was, oh, Buddhism, Buddhism, that's not it, Buddhism. Buddhism. Bo Buddhism. 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 <laughs> yeah. You're good. You're good. They, um, that they didn't know that um, it's not a religion, that is actually a way of life. And so you can be a Christian and have um, practices of Buddhism. And so that was a really aha moment. So that was a little interesting. And then the second um, thing that I remember that there were some questions around were the Muslim women coming to speak to um, our youth group. And uh, Vicki Walker, who's the missions pastor at Hyde Park, she was there for that. And um, she was a part of a, uh, table for people of different religions at that time. And so she was able to bring in these Muslim women. But I remember the hesitation around that because um, I remember them being all covered up and everything. Um, they had all their coverings on, even around their face too, when they were speaking. And I just, I remember when they walked into our building, there was, it was like, is it okay that they're here? Is it, I don't, nothing about like, we're not excited that they're here, but I think just, it was, it was hesitation of, is this okay? It was just like a brand new experience. And so, um, I don't think that there was fear. I don't think that there was, you know, any pushback from it, but it was just, it, it was a brand new experience. So it was like, Oh, you just want to handle this really softly and, and tenderly. So that's, that's the only thing I can think of, of any kind of like, tension of some sort, but it wasn't even tension. It was just, um, you want to handle this gently, I think was the vibe. Yeah. But overall, good experience. Overall, good experience. How about Will? Any pushback from your perspective? Uh, no, like Emily said, I didn't know of any pushback. Um, but I feel like it's it's difficult to do things like that because I feel like the people who are pushing back are the ones that really need to go and learn about this stuff because I, I believe most people don't hate to hate. They hate because they don't understand. And so I feel like the people who are pushing back should go out and see what it's like and see that they're not bad people. They're not, you know, like doing all these things, bad things that people say they're doing. They're just normal people who just practice a different religion. And so that's how I feel. So I'm glad there was no pushback. And yeah. Okay, cool. How about you, Aubrey? Yeah, I would say the same as Emily and Will. I didn't hear any pushback and I'm very glad that I didn't. Um, part of me, like when we first started this, I was kind of worried that there would be just because, you know, there's always some people out there who aren't open to learning about different religions or cultures but everyone was so excited um all the youth like they were i mean we had more youth attend this than like we normally do like on a normal sunday night like it was crazy um parents came a good majority of them had children in youth but as emily said some of them like didn't have any kids in the youth program and they still showed up um I 
I even like shared this with like people at my school and I was like, guys, this is like amazing. Look at what we're doing. And um, even people who aren't Methodists but are still Christian, they were like, oh, this is such a good idea. Like my teacher, she's, um, she's a Baptist and she was like, oh, that's so great that your church is doing this. Um, my parents were excited. Like I honestly didn't hear any pushback or bad feedback from this experience. Well, that's encouraging. I got to say, that's encouraging. And hopefully whoever's listening to this can be encouraged just in case they're afraid to do something like this because of the, the pushback. But maybe it's a matter of context, right? Maybe it's a matter of context. Maybe in some cities you may get more pushback than other. But okay, I have two more questions for the three of you or maybe just a couple of you, whoever wants to share. And the first one is about how you reconciled this experience with your Christian faith. Because, you know, I feel like I grew up in a generation where we're, as I was trying to introduce these concepts, introduce these concepts and introduce these ideas. And I got a lot of like, no, the, the youth are going to lose their faith. No, they're going to leave the church. No, they're not going to. What about the scripture that says Jesus Christ is the way, the truth and the life? You know, things like that. So how did you reconcile all of that? So for me, um, I think it's, I mean, I think it's really important that we lean into that everything is um, created by God, from God, for God. And there are different paths, there are different ways. And I know that a lot of people have different thoughts on where we land at the end of the day. How do we shake out? How, to, how are the sheep and the goats, um, you know, divided at the end? I don't know all that. I mean, I know what scripture says. I don't know. I, I feel like God is a living, breathing God. God isn't just the God of the Bible. The God is also the God of in front of me, um, the, the air moving in the trees and um, moving the waves on the lake in front of me. God is a living, breathing, um, beautiful creation who gets to decide whatever God wants to decide at the end of the day. And um, I don't know how you reconcile um, who gets to go forth into heaven and who doesn't, I don't know. It's not my business. What is my business is to make sure that we love and that we love well. And I think you love by understanding and communicating and getting to know and creating those spaces and environments to have conversation. I would say the same about what's going on in our political system. Hot mess express, especially here in Florida, hot mess express. And you know, the left can be right, the right can be right, the left can be wrong, the right can be wrong. At the end of the day, I want to love and I want to do that well. And I want to be known for loving. And so um, I can't say what God's going to decide to do um, with the Muslims. I can't say God's going to decide to do with the people of the Jewish and the Hindu. No idea. But I'm responsible for me. And I'm also responsible in helping teach our youth. Um, to love and to love well. And so that's how I reconcile this. And that's where I can able to put my head down on my pillow at night. So. Awesome. Thank you for sharing that. I feel like we were asking a theology question for the board of ordained ministry or something. And you're like, who is God? And who does God save? Um, but you, you know, you did well. Thank you for sharing that. Something I should, I share too. in that belief. So. I feel like it's a healthy way of living, right? Instead of always trying to figure out who's in and who's out. Um, how about Will? How did you reconcile this with your faith? Yeah, so, I mean, in Christianity, you know, we're taught to love our neighbor as ourself. And, you know, I feel like some people believe neighbor extends to your neighbor at the church or neighbor in Christianity, but it, I believe it extends to everyone. You know, everyone's your neighbor your brother, your sister. And I feel like we should just love everyone. And some people don't do that. But you know what? We should still love them. And we should try to teach them that to love everyone. What about you, Aubrey? I completely agree what everyone's been saying. You know, we're taught to love and that's what we should do. And also, in addition to that, like, again, we're 
all of us here are Christian and you know we have the basic belief we believe in God the Father and that his son's Jesus and that he died on the cross and was resurrected on Easter and every religion that we learned about has a different core belief like we do like how we have our core belief but all of these religions they also have ways of living and I feel like when learning about this we could also take some of that and like the things that they do in their life, everyday life, in order to strengthen their faith, we could take back and use in our own lives and use it to strengthen our own faith. It doesn't mean that we have to completely change the way we believe or what we believe, but we can still take away some of the things we've learned and implement it into our own lives. Because like a lot of the other religions, they really focus on helping the community like in like in Judaism that's like a big thing is helping other people um in the Islamic faith love is a huge thing and so we can take that and also implement it into our own faith without changing what we completely believe that's great and I completely agree I remember when I was exploring different faith groups too I spent some time with Muslim people and one of the things we can learn from Muslim people is their prayer life I mean, they're praying five times a day and they're very focused, very disciplined in it. And that was something that I admired from them. So you're right. We could definitely learn from each other. I, I did a sermon series like this at our Wesley Foundation. And it was called Learning from Each Other. And it made us better for it. Okay, my last question. It's kind of just some parting words from the three of you. Can you leave us with some encouragement for church leaders, whether they're clergy or youth pastors? And can you leave us with some encouragement for your generation, for Generation Z. So encouraging words for church leaders based on your experience with this sermon series and encouraging words for Generation Z. Uh, let's start with Emily and then we'll go Aubrey and then we'll go Will. So my encouragement would be, um, I think it's really important that we create relationships with people in our community, uh, whether it's other churches, other denominations, or the other religions in our community. Um, even if it's you as the youth director or you as the pastor, um, you know, having coffee and just sitting down and, you know, how are you? How is it ministering to your community? Um, what are the things that you're experiencing that I'm also experiencing? And then um, you know, that could be a great jumping off point of, hey, how about we come experience your worship service? Or would, would you like to come experience mine? Or, um, you know, what if I brought some people over to help, you know, better understand your culture and the things that you believe? Um, it is so easy. The only, I mean, literally, I just picked up the phone and I just called and I asked to speak to the rabbi and I asked to speak to Hey, I got a question about, you know, would, would your mosque be open to having a bunch of Christians come my youth group and, you know, hear from you, we're not coming to, um, to convert you. And we're, I'm certainly not bringing them to, for you to convert us, but I just want us to build a connection. I just want us to build a relationship. I have to say about the Muslim mosque, um, just shortly, they were so hospitable. Um, they had Dunkin' Donuts for our students when we got there and fed everybody. And then they um, asked us to take our shoes off and I didn't know that. So I didn't even like prepare the kids. And, you know, some kids have these like Nikes or these Yeezys or skeezies, whatever, you know, shoes. And so they're like, you want us to leave these, you know, shoes outside in a little cubby hole? And it's like, yes, that's exactly what you're doing. So I had no idea to even prepare them. And then after we had split up, girls were in the back, boys were in the front. Um, afterwards, we went out and they prepared a like home cooked meal for everyone to take home in to go boxes and gave everyone this bag that had a Quran in it and information about their church and their services and um you know, said this was so great. We wanted to open up about, you know, I think they're doing it once a month now to open up to the community to just have a, you know, what are the Muslims? What What's the Islamic faith about? So that was pretty awesome that because I reached out and asked, could we do this? Now they as a community were like, we need to have more open doors because we don't want people afraid of us. We want people to know we're a loving community. And so 
I thought that was really powerful for them to feel like, you know, people are curious and to open that up. So I would say it starts with a phone call and it's just, you know, Hey, would you be open to this period? End of story. And it was awesome. It was awesome. That's great. And it's kind of funny. I pictured as you were sharing the donuts and coffee piece, I picture the Muslim folks being like, what do Christians like to eat? Donuts and coffee. What do Christians like to do? Potlucks, eat. But this is something that I've been trying to share to everybody. Food. Food brings people together. If you can do something with food, it will bring people. Okay, so I, I digress. Um, we're going to go with Aubrey. Any last words of wisdom you want to share with us? Yeah, I'm with Emily on it. Just just do it. Go out, meet some people. Um, I feel personally like a lot of our problems we have in the world are because people are so divided and that people are not open to connecting with other people of different faiths or beliefs. Um, a lot of our issues like in politics, I mean, a lot of them are like driven by religious beliefs. Um, a lot of people are prejudiced against other people strictly for their religious beliefs. And if people would just come together as a community and just share and say, hey, we're, we're all human here. I mean, we may believe different things, but at the end of the day, we all live on the same earth. We're, we're all made out of the same things. And that's what makes us people. And so we should just love each other for that. And so like, you shouldn't be afraid to meet new people of different faiths, backgrounds, cultures, or anything, because again, at the end of the day, we're all the same. Awesome. Thank you so much for those words. How about you, Will? Uh, yeah, I have to agree with Emily and Aubrey. It's a great idea. I would encourage anybody, whether it's just a single person or like a whole youth group or church, to just go out and meet, meet different people, meet people of different religions, talk with them understand them better and it will help us all grow together as one community um and it yeah it's just a great idea for anybody awesome well thank you so much to everybody for sharing i think what you guys have shared has made a lasting impact on me and hopefully it will inspire many different youth groups to open up their minds and to build community um, you know, I have a kind of a challenge for everybody, but maybe it's not even a challenge because I don't really know exactly what's happening in youth group. But some of the work that I do with the beloved community is bringing awareness, just teaching people. And I feel like that's what you all did. You're bringing awareness, educating, getting rid of stereotypes, teaching, education. And what I've learned from Sharon Austin is that there's three parts to this kind of growth process. There's awareness, there's practice, and then there's accountability. And so I'm hoping that as a people, we can move from the awareness stage to the practice stage. So how can we actually get these people together in a room, get all these different people together in a room to make an impact in the community and gather around one vision. And so that's something that I would love to see happening all across the world. I'm sure it's probably, it may already be happening, um, but yeah, let's move from the awareness stage, right? Like how long are we gonna be in this stage? How much longer? <laughs> so. Well, thank you again for your time and Emily, great work out there. And if anybody listening to this podcast wants to follow up with Emily, we're going to put some information on our follow-up email. We're also going to um, follow up with any resources that you may need. If you need a resource, please reach out to us. And we're happy to be doing these table talks and to continue to bring awareness to the work of the beloved community, because this is the work of the beloved community as well, bringing awareness to Generation Z about different religions. So thank you so much for your time and we'll see you next time.